<laughs> Guess what? <laughs> tomato planting day. Guys, we're going to go over. We're going to do an overview of the tomatoes I'll be planting for 2024. This is 8 o'clock tomato talk. The channel is called 8 o'clock tomato talk because I love tomatoes more than all the other vegetables. They are so varied, so beautiful. Over 3,000 varieties are available to plant. What a, what a gift, what a blessing to live in an era, in a time where we can actually choose so many. I've chosen 30 this year. I've got a smattering of ones I've saved from last year. Save your seed, guys. Remember, don't save heirlooms or don't save uh, hybrid plants. They will produce something weird sometimes. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. It won't. But um, heirlooms, always save those. So, <clears throat> first tomato. Very special to my wife and I. Yellow pear tomato. Look at the date on that. Kind of an experiment. Cause guess That's what? I forgot to save seed from it last year. I don't believe it. It gets a little crazy. I'm pretty unorganized of a gardener. Organic is kind of a silly word they use a lot nowadays for stuff at the store that's supposed to be better for you, for you than other alternatives. But the organic way I do life is kind of con confounding sometimes. So I didn't save seeds from this. But check it out. 11 Three eleven on November third of two thousand eleven in Southern California, my wife had the forethought, the foreknowledge, to save these seeds from a tiny backyard rented house garden, and we grew some yellow pear and we loved them. Saved the seeds. I'm going to grow these. We're going to see how long seeds last. There we go. Eleven eleven. It's twenty twenty four. So thirteen years. Around thirteen years. These have been around ten years. It's supposed to be the limit for tomato seeds. We'll find out. Here's some more I saved, goat bag, <laughs> goat bag. I get them for the name, yes I do. These are supposed to be awesome tomatoes. You'll see goat bag up there. They vary in shape. So this is, I say curved shape on this one. Well, here's another goat bag. Looks like Italian heirloom, more like just a round one. It, that I've saved two different, I have two different bottles of seeds because I'm not sure how it's gonna turn out, but I'm just experimenting myself, seeing if I can kind of refine it even further Maybe the curved shaped ones I saved, shaved, blah, blah. maybe the ones I've saved from the curved shaped fruit will produce a curved shaped one. Small company called Renaissance Farms. The guy's name is Curtis. He grows some amazing tomatoes and I got the goat bag from him. I just couldn't resist. We're going to find out how these turn out shape wise. I'm going to plant both and document both. Dwarf Johnson, the Dwarf Seed Project, Craig Lahulier. Craig, I've heard Epic Gardening, Kevin and Epic Gardening call him the godfather of tomato growing and he truly is awesome guy i've been following him i've got his book epic tomatoes dwarf tomato dwarf johnson is a dwarf plant about four feet tall pinkish red fruit like a large cherry size excited about that i saved my seed i also have the original seed packet from it from victory seed company is who they marketed these through but i'm going to use the ones i saved because you know it's acclimated to this this territory here this uh, climate Aunt Ruby's German Green, another I saved. Amazing tomato, huge beefsteak. I'm gonna show a picture up here. Very cool picture. They're amazing. Green with a little bit of blush and incredible tasting. I will show these to my coworkers where I work at Home Depot and they'll be like, um, wow, fried green tomatoes are my favorite. And I'm like, yeah, I know, but guess what? These are ripe. These are not for fried green tomatoes. You put these babies in a skillet with batter on them, they'll just fall apart. They'll disintegrate. Eating fresh. But people think green tomato. Oh, that's fried green tomato. True. Love fried green tomatoes. Don't get me wrong. But this is a green when ripe tomato. Very special fruit. Here's the original package. It says Jim's Tomatoes. Developed over 20 years the original seed is from a gentleman in Owensville, Indiana. It's about 20 or 30 miles north of us. This is what it came in. His dear wife brought him to me. At the time, Jim was 86 years old. I was not able to garden anymore. He had, he had developed and saved and grew only this tomato. And it's always going to be known to me and the rest of the world, whoever watches my channel, as Jim's tomato. Very special. I saved the seeds from Jim's last year. Only got a few good fruits from it. We're going to keep this thing going. I feel like I've been entrusted to these seeds since Jim can't garden anymore. And his dear wife brought me some. So Jim's. There we go. Cherokee Purple. Grew these at a rental as soon as we moved to southern Indiana. They're acclimated a little better to our 
climate, I believe. Old German. Oh man, these are great. This is like a, uh, I'm gonna put a picture up of this one too. These are a bicolor. So a little bit of orange, a little bit of yellow. It's beautiful, very mild tomato, awesome. All right, that's the ones I saved guys, about six or seven varieties. Now we're gonna get into the ones I bought. New company I'm going with here this year, Bear Mountain. I think they're a small company. Marglobe Tomato. Marglobe Tomato is like the parent to many of the slicing tomatoes and canning tomatoes we, we have nowadays. I'm growing Celebrity in my garden. It might even be a parent, one of the parents to Celebrity along with another red tomato that they've put together to make the Celebrity or to make the Early Girl or Bushmaster tomato or whatever okay so hand gestures peace fine cherry a i think it's from the sweet 100 lineage but this is an open pollinated version of it so cool peace fine cherry lots of long trusses of cherry tomatoes so cherry tomatoes awesome here's some of the hybrids we're going to grow this year yeah i'm growing hybrid hybrids mountain pride from mountain valley seed company i believe these guys are in utah Got these last year. They didn't do too good last year. Um, I think it was my location and probably starting them too late. Me, Kevin, start them way earlier than you did last year. So that's what we're doing. But some of my beef steaks didn't ripen until the first part of September. That's too late in zone 6B. Here's the second hybrid, Celebrity. I just mentioned that in reference to the, to the Mar Globe, possibly being a parent of it. They are similar, you know, six to eight ounce, 10 ounce fruits. We'll see. These have quickly become one of our favorites. Green zebra, guys, look at that. They are amazing. I love the, um, see, I've taped it up with duct tape. That's because I ripped it open and, and read the uh, story about the green zebra. It's just, and there's a story inside the packet, so I had to rip it open and to tape it back up. But fortunately, Botanical Interest puts these neat little pouches in there. So, see the little pouch? And I got it folded over. So there's a pouch and a pouch. Good deal. Botanical Interest. I believe that's the company that Kevin Espiritu from Epic Garden just purchased. It sounds like it's in good hands. Wonderful tomato. Very tangy and sweet. New one from Baker Creek. You got to love these guys' photography. You got to love their passion. <laughs> Alice's Dream. Sounds like a metal band. I love it. Indeterminate. Average 80 days to maturity. So I'm going to have to be patient with this one too. Getting them in the ground early. I'm starting them today. It's only February 20th. Something like that. Wonderful tomato. Look at that. Completely. You can see the anthocyanin just in there all over. Look at the blackish blush on the top. Look at that. Amazing. Alice's Dream. Our favorite tomato. Dum, dum, ba, bum, bum, bum. All right, here we go. Italian heirloom. We love this tomato. It's a big beef steak. I, I'm going to put a picture up here. Um, amazing. A garnish of uh, fresh basil from the gar garden. Salt and pepper. A little olive oil. Boom, you've got it. If you want to get all crazy, you can do the caprese, I believe is the way to pronounce it, and add the slices of mozzarella or some kind of nice cheese on top of that, and you got a meal. Italian heirloom, our favorite tomato of all. We've been growing this for many years. Seed Savers is the only one I'll trust to buy from. It's worked for us. I'm just going to stick with them. Italian heirloom, beautiful, beautiful slicer. Obviously great for sauce. Cherokee Carbon. Okay, talking about parents, this is the offspring of Cherokee Purple and the Carbon Tomato. So, the Carbon Tomato is what they call a brown tomato, and the Cherokee Purple is considered a purple. You mix those two together and you get a more productive, more disease resistant plant. It's called an F1 hybrid. It's a first generation hybrid. And uh, that's what Cherokee carbon is. F1 hybrid. This thing is excellent and it's very productive. I'm putting a picture of it right up here. My wife holding this thing. It's like double globed monster we picked right at the end of the season. Another fun one. This is more of a, this is a brown tomato. I guess you would say I like to grow different colored tomatoes. Why not, guys? There's 3,000 3, of them to try. It's tomato. Look, you can only see that part. There it is. Thorburn's Terracotta. Look at that beauty. 
introduced in 1893, love the history, 1893 by James Thorburn of New York. Honey brown skin, orange pink flesh, and green seed mass. What, I just, <laughs> the variety, it's amazing. More standard stuff here for a second. John Bauer, once again, of the line of tomatoes that they grew once upon a time in the teens and the 20s and 30s when they were uh, looking for great producers for canning and stuff. It's just a good standard sized tomato. It's also known as Bonnie's Best. So that might ring a bell to you tomato growers out there. So introduced in 1914 by J. Bogiano and son of Baltimore, Maryland. Bright red, heavy producer, great. There it is, pretty standard red tomato. Odd for my collection. Back to the cool ones, Paul Robeson, named after an opera singer who was a great equal rights advocate, advocate back in the uh, earlier parts of last century, 1940s, 50s, 60s. Anyway, dusky brick red fruits, so definitely not a red one, but look at that thing. It's like a tomato lover's tomato. Oh, ho, oh, canner howl. Classic big red beefsteak. This thing, four to five inches in diameter, one and a half pounds. We grew some big ones last year. Uh, double fruit common. They'll grow together like heirlooms will. It kind of fuse together like the picture of the Thorburn's terracotta I showed you a minute ago. Good flavor. So this was donated by Seed, by seed Savers Exchange member Reverend C. Frank Morrow of Minnesota. In his donation letter, Reverend, and that's how these companies like Seed Savers get a lot of their inventory, a lot of their seed stash. People wanting to help be a part of keeping these heirloom, these old-fashioned seeds alive. How wonderful is that? <laughs> Reverend Morrill states that this variety originated in Germany and has been in his family since 1916. Four to five inches, double fruit, common, good flavor, low acid, moderately sweet. We love this one because we do a lot of different colors. There's a red one, large red cherry. I usually got this from Seed Savers, but I ordered, I forgot when I did my order and didn't get it from them. So I got this from where I work. I, it better be the same large red cherry because I love these. Ben Cuisenberry is the guy who saved this thing along with many others. Uh, I think he was, uh, I think more a mortgage lifter possibly. The brandy wine for sure. He was instrumental in bringing that to the public eye and keeping it around. Ben Cuisenberry, what a grand guy, what a hero. Lived, he was like 98, I believe. Seed saver is what he was. And this is part of what he saved and secured for future generations. Lar large red cherry, that's all it's called. Beautiful, just big trusses. The thing is like the size of a ping pong ball sometimes. Let's go. Ah. Mortgage Lifter. I'm excited about this. There are improved versions of this, more of a reddish fruit, better production, better disease resistance. I went with the original one from Baker Creek. Love the history. I'm going to go for it. I might only get six tomatoes compared to 12 from the new improved one, but I'm going for it. So there we go. Delicious, rich, sweet taste. Ah, Mortgage Lifter. <laughs> dad Sunset. I'm a dad riding off to my sunset. Not yet, buddy. Okay. It's the first truly orange tomato I've grown. Loving it. Season such. We're doing this. Sun gold. I'm going to put a picture of that up there. Sun gold. Our, fav our favorite cherry tomato. My wife's favorite cher cherry tomato. Amazingly sweet sun gold. 42 day. Thank you, Seeds and Such. This little company sent me a bonus just for ordering a couple uh, tomato seeds. They sent me another tomato seed. I've got this one in the ground already. Look at that. It's called 42 Day. That's a short season. We're going to see. Got it in the planter already back there mixed in with the onions. My favorite salad-sized tomato. It's going to be in our garden forever. Stupich, I believe. I used to call it the wrong thing for years. Um, Stupich. Uh, just a salad size. Wonderful. From Czechoslovakia. San Marzano Paste Tomato. We're going to go for it. Didn't do great last year. Did really good the first year. Going to do it again. High Mowing Seeds, another company we ordered from a lot. Seed Savers. I've had these since uh, 
2018, I think they'll be good. Blonde Kofchen, which means little blonde girl in German, I believe. Mild tomato along the taste-wise taste family of like the yellow pear, kind of mild, but wonderful. Very productive, little guys. And last, no, we got some more. Peach Blow Sutton. I think one of our kids colored on that. It didn't originally look like that. Sorry, seed savers. From England, Peach Blow. Looks like blown glass. Hasn't done great. I'm still going to try it. I've never got a decent crop out of these. We're going for it again. So, a couple bonuses. These are from uh, the company that sent me the goat bag seeds. They sent these freebies. Yellowstone. It's like two seeds in there. I'm going to grow it. Don't even know what it is. Moonstone. I think I've got a picture of this one I can put up there. Cool tomato. Anthocyanin, black on the top a little bit. Green when ripe. And last but not least, raspberry vacrant. Vicrant. Only one seed left. I'm going to stick it in the ground. Can't even remember what it was from that company in Bloomington. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate you uh, tuning in to 8 o'clock Tomato Talk. It's tomato season. Yeah.